All right, y'all. So imagine my surprise, okay? Imagine my surprise I get. I was like looking up something Led Zeppelin related or something like that. And then this Grand Funk Railroad article pulls up from Ultimate Guitar Got Top. Ultimate Guitar Got dot com. All right. And I didn't know at some point that Grand Funk was opening for Led Zeppelin. So this is titled Grand Funk Railroad Frontman recalls Led Zeppelin manager stopping their set because they outperformed them. And this is, uh, I believe, and a shout out to the Phoenician, the writer. Um, But this is according to Mark Farner. Okay, so the article goes on to say. uh, You guys can read along with me, said uh, Mark Farner, the original guitarist and singer for Grand Funk Railroad, reflected on his band opening for Led Zeppelin back in the day when manager Peter Grant reportedly decided to cut the set short. Rock and roll is full of wild stories and Grant's infamous reputation remains to this day. You know what I'm saying? Um, The business must have been rough back in the 60s and 70s. So the manager did everything he can to leap, could he could to leap Led Zeppelin pushing forward. So according to Grand Funk Railroad, Mark Mike Farner, one of thing, one of the things Grant did was cut their set short when they were supporting Led Zeppelin said this was reportedly back in the end of the 1960s in Detroit, Michigan. I think that's where Grand Funk is from. Say in the city's Olympia Stadium, appearing in the Beyond the Vibe podcast, Farner looked back, appearing on the Beyond the Vibe podcast, Farner looked back on this tour and said, so now here we are, opening for Led Zeppelin, and they, the audience, are loving it, right? So their band that they love is now at Cleveland Auditorium. I mean, we went to the little club down the street (laughs) and at the bottom of the uh, Statler Hilton Hotel. Say we were on stage at Cleveland Auditorium. They were loving it. Say when we did Inside Looking Out, which is fire, by the way. uh, Oh, man, it brought the house down. I mean, they were screaming, jumping, pounding. It was pandemonium. Say it was great. So. Now, look at this. Look at what's happening in the 60s, right? You ever wonder why that you ever wonder why some bands don't get the recognition that they deserve? And you got things like this happening. Things get kind of spooky, right? When certain bands got favor over others. Now, me personally, having reacted to Led Zeppelin and uh, Grand Funk Railroad, um, I like both bands. I think they make some of the most fire music I've ever heard. But when you hear this, like you just think like, okay, so why they can't both shine. So however, it seems that things got even more exciting for grand folk railroad fans. Once the band arrived in their hometown, Detroit, Farner continued. So we get to Detroit the next night and we're in our set to a home audience. It's our state. And we had not played in the state of Michigan since the band started. And here we now with Led Zeppelin. So of all of our home people, the fans loved us. Here we are, the band from Flint, Michigan. Man, the world is finding out about us, and they even have us higher and pushed us higher. So it's like, come on. Come on. The band is home. This, they got home field advantage, of course. Of course they're going to get more love. You know what I'm saying? Then the away team, Okay. And before we went into inside looking out, they knew the set. That's why. That's why he pulled them off stage. And before we went into inside looking out, which is they one of their hit songs, one of their biggest songs, if not the biggest song, they um they knew the set. So this apparently didn't sit well sit at all well with Grant, who demanded that they get off stage ASAP, recalling the occasion, Mike said. So Peter Grant told Terry Knight, our manager, I'm pulling the plug. You got to get your band off stage. Our power quit. The only thing you could hear was the drums. I'm playing. I turn around like, what just happened? I turn around and Brewer's playing and he didn't know what to do. And Terry comes out. He grabs the microphone. 
They turned that one on, microphone on. He said, due to contractual obligation, Grand Funk has to leave. And he's motioning to us, like, get the off stage. The audience went, no, boo. <laughs> and they throwing wine bottles, whiskey bottles, beer bottles. All this glass started piling up, and they did not like it. So an hour and a half later, over half of the audience had left, of course, because they home. Farner offered the Olympia was a great big venue, and over half the audience left because of that. Said, these guys sound pretty good, but they couldn't take the pressure. After getting off stage, Farner decided to use the opportunity to check out Led Zeppelin's performance from the crowd he remembered. Mel Shasher, the bass player for Grand Funk, and I said, man, look, there's no people. Let's just go down. Let's, let's just go down, go sneak down from the back and get as close as we can. And we watched Led Zeppelin for two or three tunes. We watched Paige play his guitar with the uh, viola of Voila Bow and the, the theatrics. We watched them and said, oh, these guys sound pretty good, but they couldn't take the pressure. The manager couldn't. I thought they were pretty nice guys. I never did hang or talk to them or anything, but you know, that's how it happened. Okay, Led Zeppelin fans, what's, what's going on here? What's going on, Led Zeppelin fans? Your boys couldn't take the heat. Your boys couldn't take the heat. Grand Funk by Grand Funk ruined Led Zeppelin set. Well, they managed it. They manager. And, and I'm like, they opened it for those guys. They opened it for Led Zeppelin. Let them play it at home. This is a crazy story, but this is like one of those things that you hear about. Um, one of those stories that kind of lets you know, like, how in the world did things transpire like this in the music industry? Grand Funk was on their way up in Led Zeppelin. They all were existing in the same generation. I wonder if anybody from my subscriber base were here, were there that night when that happened. I thought that was an interesting, interesting story. You know, uh, we can always say that Led Zeppelin had the better, may have had the better discography than Grand Funk. Um, but just that one night, man. And I mean, stuff like that could change your career. And I always kind of look at stuff like that. Like, man, look, you talk about somebody working against you that don't want you to get no shine. You know, how close were Led's, uh, how close were Grand Funk Railroad to getting they shine like they deserve? You know, they were a popular band, but they could have been bigger, maybe bigger than Led Zeppelin, you know, if they had the equal opportunity to, to be seen, you know, and they weren't living in the digital age, man. It's almost like if you lose your opportunity, man, that's, that's your career. Now you're a writer. Now you write music for everybody. That's pretty much what it is. But I just think that's so interesting that the manager shut them down and then they ended up playing in front of a half a crowd. I bet the guys, Robert Plant, Page, and all them were pissed off at their manager that they did that. Completely took the steam out of the concert. And who knows, man, they could have had a jam session later, could have played together on stage to kind of entertain the crowd and made an unforgettable experience. But I thought that was an interesting article I came across, man. I thought that was pretty interesting. So let me know how you guys feel in the comment section below. Were you there that night? Are you old enough to remember? <laughs> All right. Catch you guys on another one. Peace.